Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Curable's Instagram. I'm Tressa Buckland here today with Curable member and fibromyalgia fighter, Kaylee. Kaylee, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Tressa. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you here. And I know that your story, spoiler alert, it spans over 20 years, right? Yeah, yeah. Long time. Okay, so let's get started. And can you tell me a little bit about when your symptoms first started and what those symptoms were? Yeah, so the story that, you know, kind of developed over time was that it started around um, 2002. So it was my second semester in college. And, you know, if you remember to 2002, there's a lot going on in the world as well at that time. And, you know, I was just having fun in college and, and enjoying my life. And I, I got um, this, I developed a strange rash actually, and mm -hmm. didn't know what it was and just kind of blew it off. And eventually I, I went to the doctor when I was at home over the summer and I had mono and valley fever at the same time. And that's rough. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, kind of for, for the folks at home who don't know what Valley fever is. Could you tell us what that is? Yeah. If you don't live in the Southwest, you might not have heard about it before. So it is a fungus actually in the dirt. And so when you have the big dust storms, everything out here, it can get in your lungs and cause, you know, infections in your lungs. So, um, it can really, you know, a lot of times people just get kind of sick, but it can really take people out too. Um, mm. yeah. So, so that's, so I, you know, spent like the summer sleeping on the couch and I was really tired and right. just, you know, got back into life and, um, and try to get, you know, back into the swing of things with school and all of that. And I just couldn't get over it. Um, so mm -hmm. I went back to the doctor. I'm like, Hey, I just still feel horrible. You know, I've got like this malaise. I'm tired. Like I just can't get over this and you know, what, what's wrong. And he's like, well, it sounds like you have depression. So here is some depression medication. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. Um, I'll go with that. And so I, you know, tried that and was taking that for about a year. And, you know, when I graduated, it was just a two-year college and I just really didn't know what I was going to do with my life. Cause I just still wasn't feeling well and all of that and just wanted some more answers. So mm -hmm. I actually wanted to, um, do a church mission. So I went, found another doctor, <laughs> got off depression medication. Um, and you know, went to him and I said, Hey, I still am feeling all this. And so I don't know what's going on. And I developed a chronic sore throat you know, all these mm -hmm. things. And, and so he just put me through test after test, after test, after test. And, you know, in your twenties, that is kind of scary. <laughs> you don't really know what's going on. And you know, danger signals everywhere going off for that. Um, and I just, they couldn't really find much. And so I just like, all right, I just need to move on with my life. I don't really know what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. they f and they found a, a, a lung nodule as well, which looks like lung cancer. <laughs> so that's scary. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. But it was good that they knew that I had valley fever because that comes from valley fever. So they okay. just had to, they had to do scans every once in a while just to check up on it. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, it, it looked fine and, and everything. So I just went back to school, tried to figure out what I was doing with my life. And, you know, the next few years was just a constant, you know, back and forth, you know, go to school, come home in the summer, go to the doctors again, try to figure what's going on. You know, they would tell me here and there, oh, you know, it's, you know, asthma or, I even got like a throat strain. They're like, oh, you're using, mm. cause I love to sing and I was in choir and everything. And I would get bronchitis all the time. I'd get laryngitis. Gosh. Um, and so they're like, oh, you've strained your voice. And so I had to go to like, voice, you know, like therapy and stuff like vocal mm -hmm. therapy, um, just different things like that. Chronic rhinitis, you know, it's just all these little things that they were telling me, but it still wasn't answering my question of like, what is wrong? And, you know, I started developing the pain all over the widespread pain. I didn't know how to describe it. You know, going to the doctor was like, well, you know, I've got pain here and here and here and here and here, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like you, sometimes I was so tempted, you know, they have the paper and you, you with the body and like mark where you, it hurts. I'm like, I'm just going to circle <laughs> the whole thing here, <laughs> you know, cause I don't know how to describe this. 
Um, and, you know, on the scale of one to 10, you know, I hate that scale. It's so subjective. And, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I would say one number and then the nurse would leave. I'm like, oh, wait, no, did, was that right? Like, it was like a test, <laughs> you know, like, um, so I, you know, and I had like a shoulder strain from work, um, and just, it just that back and forth. And then I had a, then I was in a car accident in 2007. Mm. and got whiplash and everything and oh, that just as you can imagine just completely aggravated everything yeah definitely didn't make things better <laughs> yeah no definitely did not make it better and just you know after a year I was you know I went to chiropractors and everything and you know technically it was healed you know the whiplash had healed but yet I'm like I'm still feeling this pain like what is going on my neck just horrible awful pain and so I got an MRI and it was a herniated disc and mm -hmm. <laughs> um and all and then I in 2008 I was finally officially diagnosed with fibromyalgia and I was a candidate for a while but I think you know they just have to rule out that. that's just kind of the way it works it's it's more of just ruling out everything else that can go on and so it wasn't quite, even though it was a diagnosis, it still wasn't quite, didn't explain everything to me that was going on. You know, I'm the kind of person that I'm like, I have to figure it out. <laughs> like what's happening. I have to figure it out. Um, yeah. How did you feel after get after years of this hard to diagnose pain? How did you feel getting the diagnosis of fibromyalgia, something that doesn't necessarily have a straightforward cure yeah um in your early 20s it's tough really mm -hmm. tough um people don't understand it I didn't even understand it the doctor just handed me a pamphlet you know I was like oh here's what it is um good news is is it's not degenerative you know your body isn't breaking down which okay um but we don't, there, you know, it's like, we don't know anything about it and there's no cure for it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really, really hard. And at the time in 2008, it was still um, controversial as well. So not every doctor even believed it was a diagnosis. And so that, that was rough to try to explain it to people you know, there's, there's some diagnoses where people have some, some kind of understanding of it, but mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was so hard, you know, with my friends or even with dating, you know, how do you describe that to somebody? Um, Hey, right. like I have fibromyalgia and like, what's that? <laughs> you know, how yeah, do you not exactly that? first date talk. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Like where do you breach that conversation? And it was, it, it, it was really hard and, and really awkward. And I remember some really hard dates where I was in a lot of pain and trying to hide it and didn't know what was going on. Um, and along with that, there's a lot of like the sister conditions with it too, like IBS, um, other things, other things like that. And of course, you know, I had all of those things. And so unfortunately, like in 2008, that was a big year because I also graduated from college. There's a lot going on. Wow. So graduate well into and in 08 there was a huge crash too so I lost mm -hmm. my job graduated from college um you know I ended up just like finally finishing I didn't even know what I was going to do with my life I'm like I just need to get a degree because I have no clue what else to do because I didn't have any confidence in myself and being able to hold down a job um have a career um start a family <laughs> you know all those things that I wanted to do in life and so I even had um, like really weird symptoms as well. And it, just so hard to explain it. So after that, I started to do a lot of alternative therapies mm -hmm. because I didn't have any insurance <laughs> anymore because I had graduated and I wasn't on my mom's insurance anymore. Okay. Um, which was actually really good, but then it turned into, you know, all these diagnoses that I had had, and then it started switching to like, okay, now it's vitamin deficiencies or allergies, you know, it just, it was kind of the same story, but just a different backdrop, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's always just this constant worry of there's something horribly wrong with me. No one understands it. Um, we're about, you know, 10, 20 years behind in, you know, the health field and understanding these things. And um, like I, I, everything, I was just doing everything wrong too. You know, I found all these reasons, like I'm not eating well, I'm not sleeping well. Mm -hmm. It was so easy to just blame myself for all these things. Um, right. And to put all the weight on your shoulders. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time as well, like I, it, the good thing about it was I started to see a lot of those connections of like my, my mental health and my physical health. And I really started to mm -hmm. see how it mirrored each other and it, it, down to like my emotions and how it like was a total mirror of the, the physical symptoms that I had. And, you know, I could really start seeing that. And I knew, so I, there was something that, it, that had happened at that time. And so I started going to, to therapy and that was kind of, you know, the first time, first time <laughs> that I went to therapy. Yeah. What was and, that experience like? You know, it was, it was good. It was, it was helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, it wasn't, I'm like, I know that these are related, but I couldn't talk about my physical pain in the same way that I was talking about my emotional pain as like they're connected, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and I still felt so everything, everything health-wise felt so compartmentalized, mm -hmm. you know, everything was separate. It's like, okay, what specialist am I at right now? What do I need to talk about now? what do I need to like push aside and not talk about what is not relevant to this right now. And so everything was so in little boxes in my mm -hmm. life. And I just, I just, I have to see how things connect, you know, that's kind of the way my brain works. I want to see how it's all connected. Mm -hmm. And so I, I mean, I learned some amazing things about um, so many things in the health field and, and even about myself personally, and I still just wasn't able to connect it all together. So I, it, but it was really helpful because I was able to kind of get to that point where I'm like, you know what? I just need to live. I, I need to live my life. You know, yeah. just sit here waiting for life to happen or being afraid of life to happen. So I, um, reacquainted with my now husband and we got married and moved to Brazil right away. <laughs> so he Ooh. was going to Brazil for work. And so we spent, you know, a couple of years in Brazil, which was uh, amazing. And cool. right. Yeah. Right before we went, I was actually diagnosed with endometriosis as well. Oh man. Which, you know, when you want to start a family that, that is really scary mm -hmm. and just all of these different things going on and, um, dealing with infertility while we were in Brazil. And then when we were finally back in the States, I, um, I, I found another doctor and we were living in another state, um, not where we were, were from. And so I found a doctor and started that process of like, I need to figure this out. And so he actually approached the fibromyalgia again, <laughs> mm -hmm. tried some new things and, you know, it got to the point where he said, you know what, I'm sorry, I can't help you anymore. But we're pretty much reached the end of what I can do for you with fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. and, which I appreciated his honesty, <laughs> mm -hmm. but that, that's hard, you know, to hear that. And yeah. so I eventually, my, my first son was born and postpartum hit really, really, really hard. And mm. so I, you know, just with everything, every single pain, you know, you can feel physical pain, mental pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain, social pain, you know, it's just any, you know, all that pain that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So I went back to therapy, you know, um, got back with that, started to feel better, but I was diagnosed with another herniated disc and degenerative disc disease. Wow. So now I had this whole time I had built up in my head. Well, as long, you know, at least it's not degenerative, you know, at least there's not some damage going on in my body. Right. So this was a huge danger, you know, signal for me, like now it's, now it's degenerative. They see something 
Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I started feeling better after going to therapy, I was doing physical therapy. And so I'm like, all right, this is fine. You know, it's not that bad. I don't understand why they can explain it to me, but like, we're good. I got this. Um, and then I had my second son and after him, (laughs) I felt like, um, I think that degenerative thing kind of hit me really hard and Mm -hmm. I was just feeling all of the pain again. It was horrible. I could barely even, um, stand up. I could barely even hold him. I I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. Everything just hurt, you know, trying breastfeeding and all that. It was just, everything just hurt so bad. So I, um, went back, got more tests, (laughs) went to a rheumatologist, neurologist, you know, Mm -hmm. they did all the tests. They even did that like nerve test where they stick you with needles and things like that. Yikes. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. not fun. I wouldn't recommend it. (laughs) So, you know, then, you know, you fear all of these other diagnoses and, and so I got all that done and then it was just another, like, okay, you are fine. You know, we can't find anything wrong. We've done all of these tests again and, and you're fine. You seem to be fine. We, We don't know what's happening. We can't explain anything other than fibromyalgia and even though we don't understand it <laughs> at this point, were you like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, did you think yeah. something was going to, were they, did you think someone was going to tell you something different finally? You know, it's, I think this is the thing that's kind of like the catch 22 because mm-hmm. you want a different answer, but you don't want a different answer. You right. know, the things they're testing for is scary. You don't want that diagnosis, but then at the end of the day, you want an explanation. You want some reason why some like, these things are happening and you want to know what's going on. You want understanding and you want to know what you can do to feel better. Mm-hmm. And, you know, up to this point, all they had was like depression medication or pain medication. You know, there wasn't a specific, it wasn't like a specific way that they could do a diagnostic testing for it Mm -hmm. where they could say, okay, this is going on, you know, you need this kind of medicine or this kind of supplement Mm -hmm. and then this will help you. And so it it is really, it's after, after getting a test, it's just this emotional roller coaster, just this constant back and forth and up and down. Cause you're like, I don't want it to be this, but I also want to know like how I can how I can heal. And it it does give you some reassurance. You know, there is some of that reassurance where it's like, okay, okay, you know, they haven't been able to find anything. I'm still breathing. I'm, you know, I can still wake up in the morning and, you Mm -hmm. know, life still goes on. And after, you know, almost 20 years, there is kind of like that. Okay. I'm still here. I I just got to keep going, you know, just keep living. And it would be this constant, I would push myself as much as I could. And then I would crash and then I'd push and crash and push and crash. And that's what it was for years for, Mm -hmm. you know, 20 years. And, you know, if I got sick or anything like that, I was, I was just gone. I was out down and it was, you know, I started to think about, okay, what are my limitations? Where do I need to pull back? And you know, and I really did. I started cutting out a lot of things from my life and just kind of stopped living in that sense, you know, thinking, well, what, you know, I, I, I can't do this, you know, I can't do that. You know, you start to really limit your life, Yeah. So, but I had to keep going. Right. And, and, uh, it started to feel a little bit better, you know, it's kind of like mm-hmm. on that up again. And, you know, this whole time it's still 24 seven pain, you know, it was, mm-hmm just constant, constant. Sometimes it would be better, you know, sometimes it would be a lot worse, but just, you know, my constant companion, my little buddy always there with me. <laughs> um, and so I got pregnant with my third son and was doing some pretty, pretty intensive therapy at this point. And I remember going to my therapist and I was like, look, I don't know how to describe this, but I know, I know, I know that my emotional health is connected to my physical health. And it was kind of hard to explain that to her, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. like, I don't know, like what your thinking is. I don't know. I mean, you feel really sheepish kind of talking Mm -hmm. about it. Like, I know this is connected, 
but I don't, I don't know if that just sounds too weird or like new age or like, you know, mm-hmm. um, but she was really understanding and, and was really working through me with some things, but I still kept hitting a wall, you know, every single thing that I started doing everything. I'm like, okay, maybe this will help. Maybe this, yeah. maybe this is the answer. Maybe, maybe this is what it is. And, and so mm-hmm. I did some pretty intensive therapy yet still, still couldn't get past it. Oh, I'm on the edge of my seat. It sounds I like know. so close. <laughs> just so close to crash the code. Yeah. Just, you know, just one thing after another. And it, it, you, you know, you can just see that, that cycle, that circle, that loop. I was just stuck in over and over and over like that back and forth, back and forth. I felt like a boomerang patient, you know, <laughs> and every time I'd go back in, it felt like I was going to court, you know, like I had to stand my case. I had to find all of these, all my evidences, you know, and, and I remember even going in sometimes and like, oh, I'm acting too happy. They're not going to believe me, <laughs> you know, like yeah, you're they're never going to believe that I'm in all this pain. Cause it's so, how do you explain that to somebody? It's so subjective. And yeah. then they're like, oh, you know, we'll see, we're going to run a test and it's going to be negative, you know? And sometimes the doctors are very, very condescending too. It's like, well, if there's something, we'll see it. Oh, look, we didn't find anything. So you're fine. So, Mm -hmm. um, so how did you, how did you finally break the cycle? Like what pushed you over the edge? What introduced you to mind, body, medicine, biopsychosocial approach and curable? Yeah. Oh yeah. So I, you know, I was just at that breaking, I was just finally at that breaking point and I was just like, man, praying and pleading, you know, for help and healing. Mm -hmm. And I was on social media (laughs) of all things. And (laughs) yeah. And there was an ad that popped up and I remember I was pregnant with my third son and got my other two sons who were still pretty close in in age and really little. And I'm like, I just, I I can't, I can't do this. I can't, I don't know if I can do this. And I saw that ad that popped up and it was something about how perfectionism (laughs) is related to chronic pain. And I, that just hit me. I'm like that. Yes, that's it. Like I totally hundred percent, you know, that is me because I believed that already for several years Mm -hmm. and I just couldn't find that connection that I was looking for. I'm like, what is this? How do I find this? Like what, how do I get my hands on this? What is this an ad for? And I, I looked up, you know, I looked up Caraval and I started looking on the blog and I started looking into the app and I was like, look, this is, I needed to find that ad again. I think I sent an email <laughs> to like support or whatever. I'm like, what is this ad? I can't find it. Maybe I was like, looking in the blog and stuff to see if they're talking about it. Um, but yeah, I ended up signing up for Curable and just like plowed my way through, you know, all the education and everything. And like this this is the connection. And I remember going into my therapist. I'm like, I found it like this, this is it. Like, I don't have to, I don't have to be like sheepish anymore talking about this. Like this is power now. Like this is, I know what this is. And this is no doubt in my mind, like what's going on. And everything just came together. Um, it was almost, it was like getting that, like I had all of these all of these puzzle pieces that I had gathered through all of this time, like all of my experience in this, you know, Mm -hmm. near near 20 years. And I had just been desperate to see how all of these things connected. I'm like, why are all of these weird symptoms? How are they connected? You know, because my doctors don't think they're connected. Like how is this connected in all of these compartments in my life? You know, it was all disjointed. Like suddenly all those puzzle pieces, I got like the box with the, you know, the puzzle box that has the picture mm-hmm. on it, you know, and it just, That's so cool. So I could see, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like suddenly I could see how it all could connect together and wow. you know how everyone says, you know, yeah, it doesn't happen overnight. And that's so true. Um, that was a little over a year ago where I found curable and, you know, it was like, almost like, why did I not find this <laughs> earlier? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it was something like, someone has figured this out. Finally, I don't have to wait another 10, 20 years. Like it's here now. Someone finally figured it out. And I think I even sent it to my doctor too. I'm like, you haven't heard from me in a while. 
<laughs> this is what's going on. This is why. <laughs> yeah. And then he, he sent me an email. I could tell he looked into it because it took him a while to respond. And he wrote back, he's like, oh, this is really, oh, I'm really glad, you know, to hear it. Here's a six week trial. If you're into, <laughs> if you don't have it already. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I think that's a thumbs up from him. From him. Nice. So yeah. And even, that. even in that time, since I found Curable, a lot has happened. So I had my, my third sign. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved to um, our home state. Like there's just, there's still a lot going on and, mm -hmm. you know, not a lot of time as we would always like, you know, to do some of the things that, that we need to, but mm -hmm. it's already just made such a huge difference. You know, I was able to have my third son without, without an epidural. Um, wow. Like, and, and the, you know, it's funny. It's like, it doesn't mean that I was weak or anything, you know, with my other sons, but that was something that was so, I had always wanted to do just to, to be like, I have power over the pain. Like I, it doesn't have to rule my life anymore. It doesn't have to control me anymore. Yeah. So and, powerful. Yeah. And that, you know, when I think about what, you know, if anyone asks or anything, it's like, okay, what, you know, why curable? Like, what has it done for you? You know, the kind of the first thing I think about, well, it took away, like when I found curable, I was finally able to let go of that fear that there was mm -hmm. something horribly wrong with me, <laughs> you know, or that I was doing something wrong. That's what mm -hmm. I had held on to for, for 20 years. And, you know, it's, it wasn't just another diagnosis. Um, I'd had plenty of those, <laughs> you know, it wasn't another treatment. I'd had plenty of those. Um, it was just a total, complete understanding of what was actually happening and that I could let go of that fear and fear didn't have to control my life anymore. Cause it had for so long. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was, you know, and, and I just think about where it's just up, you know, from here and. There's of course setbacks. I mean, every day <laughs> it seems like, you know, there's there's always gonna be that, you know, up and down, but I have different tools now. I, yeah. I know I know how my brain works now. I know how I'm I, I know that I'm my worst critic, you know, I know all these things mm -hmm. now of how I was contributing to that chronic pain and in creating, you know, those neural pathways. <laughs> Um, all those danger signals and, and all of those things. And, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like I said, it's just, it's the right tools now, you know? Yeah. I just have to say the resilience that you have shown throughout your life, truly. Um, it's really inspiring. Uh, and yeah. thank you for being so open and honest about every detail of your journey I'm sure that people are watching and expressing similar gratitude statements right now. And we are almost out of time, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but I would love to just as a closing mm -hmm. thought, get your fi final statement from you. If you could put yourself back into those mm -hmm. times in your life when you were in the eye of the tornado <sighs> and things were all just adding up and you were in so much pain if you could go back to that version of yourself and tell her anything what would you say and why yeah first of all it's hard <laughs> it's hard to go back you know yeah it, it, it's it's hard to remember just that desperation I guess is the best word um mm -hmm. you know if I could really sit down <clears throat> I, I think something that's important for something that was really important for me to understand and something that might be really important for someone else to understand um, mm -hmm. is something called the reassurance trap. And I, I was in that trap, you know, I was just constant, like, I don't feel well, well something's wrong. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? Go to the doctor, try to, you know, figure it out. Okay. Now I feel kind of okay. I've gotten some reassurance. Oh, but then life and stress and pain, like that's still happening all this uncertainty, you know, and it was just this, that was my, that was my life. Mm -hmm. Um, just that reassurance trap. And I think to, 
we can't get rid of the pain. Like you can't just run away from it. It's life. You know, we're going to feel that we're going to feel stress. We're going to feel pain. Um, we're, we're going to feel uncertainty. We can't just get rid of it. You can't run away from it, but it's changing. Like, like what they're talking about on tell me about your pain has been so helpful with having, um, like, so we have all these experiences and it's changing your response to it. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it's all about. It's changing your response to that anxiety that comes up. All of these horrible things we don't want to feel. We want to just get rid of and we just want to run away from it. You can't run away and you have to deal with it. You have to take it head on and change your response to it um, instead of resisting it and fighting it. And if I could go back and tell myself that, I'd sit myself down and be like, look, this is okay. It's okay to feel these things. It's okay, it's okay to have emotions. It's okay to have anger. It's okay to feel this pain. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and I think kind of when it goes, I have like my life story, like this is my story, this quote. And I think I found it uncurable one time. Um, and I think it just sums up everything. It's a uh, young Pueblo, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of him, but um, it, anyway, it says, it was not time that healed you. It was your courage to feel everything you used to run away from. Being with yourself and meeting your tension is hard, but is the only way to release everything that has been bottled up inside of you. Your pain was simply asking for your attention. And my pain was pretty vocal. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, yeah, it, but it, that really just sums everything up. Like that is the story of my life and it's okay to feel these things. And I don't, yeah, nothing is wrong. <laughs> Kaylee, thank you again for agreeing to come on here and share. Um, this was truly inspirational and I so appreciate your time. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share it.